Hi, my name is Katie King, and I'm the Director of Strategic Foresight Engagement at KnowledgeWorks. I'm joined here today with Trevor Hicks. Hi, my name is Trevor Hicks. I am a seventh grade history teacher at Kairos Academies in St. Louis. Thanks for joining, Trevor. Um, so we wanted to talk with you um, as it relates to our systems thinking guidebook. Uh, because you have a lot of experience that that people have been asking us about. And so we'd just love to hear some some of that experience and some of your stories, mm -hmm. uh, because you've used systems thinking as a way to help students and young people grapple with and take action on issues of racial injustice. Mm -hmm. So I'd love if you could just tell us a little bit more about those experiences and why you think systems thinking is a useful set of mindsets and tools to do that kind of work with young people. Yeah, so I can talk on those experiences some. So for the past four years, has it been? Um, not including this summer, unfortunately, because of our, you know, our circumstances. Yeah. Um, I've worked with the social system design lab at the Brown School of Social Work at Washington University in St. Louis um, to host the Changing Systems uh, Youth Summit. And all that is, it's just like a, with well, a fellowship and a summit. So there's like a three week fellowship with uh, chosen fellows who apply and we teach them like systems thinking and system dynamics um, and teach them like how to facilitate those conversations with their peers. Um, then like the culminating event is like a three, three day summit with um, where the, the fellows that we train are teaching their peers with these tools and they're typically tackling a problem that they see uh, or they face in their community. Um, so we've had project, uh, problems of like youth homelessness, um, structural racism in schools, gun violence, and then like educational equity. So my experience has just been like guiding those fellows and like just teaching them the tools and really helping them see the value in um, like their voice and their expertise based on their experiences. Because I never walk in the room and like I'm an expert on like gun violence and like I'm going to teach everything it is about gun violence. It's it's more so if I'm a facilitator and we're going to pull out like your stories and your experiences and see like what the system looks like to us and where could we possibly intervene based on what we based on how we see the system. Um, the goal is to have as many voices in the room as possible so we can start to build that picture a little bit more. Um, that's been my main experience with um, like using these tools with youth. And what would you say are some of the things that have come from that, either insights that, that they have come to or actions that they've mm -hmm. taken or, or just some of the, the results of, of those conversations and, um, and those using these tools that, that they may have had. Mm -hmm. um, some of like the major like high level insights that we've seen is like students typically walk away with like understanding like they see the bigger picture right. Um, so before they had this very narrow vision of what like youth homelessness or gun violence or educational equity or racism look like they have this very narrow lens and like after like just being around their peers and kind of walking through these tools and exploring and like diving into what the system looks like to other people out there like close to their age, um, they start to see that like, my experience is valid, but there's other people experience, other experiences are also valid. And those experiences are a lot like, they really paint a bigger picture for, for those kids. And I'm saying this really weird, but um, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that there's that bigger picture understanding. So like, yes, they still have their own mental model of it, but then now they see others point of view so they can start to consider those and like, think about, okay, well, if I experience this and you experience this, how can we come together to find a solution that works for both of us and can also change um, the system and to the best of our ability. And why do you think systems thinking is a good approach for those kinds of conversations and that sort of outcome? I feel like there's so many different ways to collaborate and different ways to have conversations. What have you seen as unique or particularly powerful about systems thinking? I, I just think it's a very like unique set of tools and like conversations that spark from it because it's not a traditional way to talk about a problem. I mean, I wish it would become the norm because that would be amazing. But like until then, like it's very like non-traditional from my experience um, and just like talking to other people who aren't familiar with it. Um, but I think what it is is that like no one in the room is an expert and like telling telling our own stories and like bringing together our experiences like and helping paint like the bigger picture of the system really like help students see like, wow, like, again, like I now see the bigger picture, like the world that there's so much going on here. Like, I didn't even know about these things because I'm not affected by so many other people are affected by it. Um, I think it's just an effective way. And it's kind of, 
it's subjective, but it's also objective at the same time. Like it allows people to just, like step back and like they put their brain on like a piece of paper or a chart or whatever, and they can see it and they can like tweak it with like whoever they're working with. Um, typically my work is done in groups. So like they can work together to figure out like, no, this doesn't fit right. Like this doesn't really tell the picture of this story. Like it's very like story centered. And I think that's the biggest part of it. Um, Cause you can do a lot of learning from stories um, and learning about other people's experiences. And to me, like working with systems and youth, especially like their stories, like help each other see bigger pictures, see the system a little bit more clear. And, um, and also it empowers them too, because they get that sense of like, wow, like my experiences are valid. Like people listen to my stories and my stories are like real. Cause sometimes, I mean, as youth, like I remember growing up, I kind of on a tangent, but like, I remember growing up, like sometimes my voice always wasn't considered when it came to like speaking to adults and stuff. Cause like um, a junior in high school, what do I really know compared to what someone else might know? But like these tools really empower students to really like think critically, but also be advocates um, for their own education and for their own voice. They really just use that voice to, to create the change that they want to see in their school or community or wherever they wanna see that change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's interesting because systems thinking treats your experience in the system as an important data point. Mm -hmm. exactly. Not just, oh, that's your story, but that's something that needs to, to be put down on paper and needs to be considered in, in the whole picture, which is, it's validating and it allows us to, to really find the, the truth in that, um, mm -hmm. that that matters when we're thinking about problems and solutions that mm -hmm. people's experiences in a system are as important to consider as the rules and the policies and the funding and all of the things that go that go into the system that the experience is another variable that we have to that we have to think about. And I, I think another like important aspect of and the reason why I think youth grab onto it so much, it doesn't feel like we're just sitting around in a circle talking about the problem itself, right? We're like we're like physically trying to problem solve, but at the same time we're not. Is the kind of the feeling I get that youth is what I perceive youth feel like. Yes, we're talking about this very heavy issue of like racism, but at the same time, like we're telling stories and we're drawing these maps and models, and it feels a little more interactive and hands on. And then, like at the end, they like you, the students step back and they see their final product. Like wow, like it didn't feel like we did all this, but we really dove really deep into like what's going on in our community, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, something about that hands on, like tactile kind of like learning and like exploring. I think is really powerful for youth as well. Is there any, um, do you have any kind of particular memory of either an action that a group took after coming together in this way, or maybe an aha moment that they had about their system or their school um, that, that came about as a result of doing this kind of work? Some of the best examples I can use are just like hearing like, like little, like, bits and pieces of stories of students like going back to their schools and like becoming advocates and fighting for the change they want to see in their schools. Um, no like super specific story for like that example, but like students will come back the next year either as a participant or as another a fellow again and they'll talk about like, yeah, we tried to start this initiative at school. Um, like administration wasn't listening or teachers weren't listening, but we kept pushing and kept fighting and showed them like, this is this like how the system kind of works in our, pers our, our perspective or from our perspective. Um, and this is like the change we want to make. And sometimes that works in the school, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I think some aha moments I've seen are just like students, just like it just clicks all of a sudden. Like when I say it clicks, I mean like the tools we're using click because sometimes it can be a little intimidating, but also the, the issue or the problem we're tackling and like, it just starts to make a lot more sense to students. I remember gun violence specifically, a student said that, he said that when he thinks of gun violence, he just thinks of someone with a gun in their hand, like pulling the trigger. But he said like, when you dive into the system dynamics of it, there's a lot more reasons and like there's roots to why people put a gun in their hand in the first place. Um, that's one really like vivid memory as to like an experience that I had where a student had an aha moment. So just those little like bits and pieces and little like impromptu like conversations that I have where I hear like 
I don't know. It's just, it's such an empowerment tool. Then like I've seen some of the high schoolers that I've worked with go off to college and like, they're just like doing amazing in college. They're all like involved on campus, um, like advocating for the change they want to see on their campus. So it's, to me, it's just the tool for some, it's a means to an end for others. Like they take it and use it. Um, but at the end of the day, I think what it really does is just empower students to use their voice and like, be the change they wish to wish to see. I know it's I'm kind of cliche, but that's. <laughs> I mean, it's a cliche for a reason. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, and I, I appreciate um, the way that the Water Center, which we have both worked with, um, frames it as habits and mindsets. That it's you you do these processes and you use these tools, but it's when they start to click and they start to influence the way that you think, um, and the way that the lens through which you see the world. That's when it really can can become powerful and that have do having that experience at a formative time in high school or yeah. or even younger um, really makes a huge difference to how people see problems approach problems work together mm -hmm. and we always can't measure that too because you can't always like measure habits and like mindsets um unfortunately but from my experience because i started systems thinking and like doing like the system dynamics work in high school my junior year i believe junior year um and continued it through college and then like even up to before teaching I was working with um, an organization that did a lot of system dynamics and like transitioning to a teacher role like all I can see is systems like the systems that affect my students and like me as a teacher and like it's really it really is like a mindset shift and like they become habits like the way I have conversations with other teachers about like just planning and like what we can do for our students is like it's honestly it's shaped who I am it shaped who I am. That's the reason I'm on this call because it, it shaped who I am. Um, it has led me to a lot of experiences. And I know that I'm not the only like student who's gone through it and like gone through it and like has changed because of it. Um, mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking time to have a conversation and good luck with the rest of the school year. And we'll uh, hopefully keep in touch to talk more about how we can spread systems thinking across the education landscape. That's the dream. Thanks for inviting me to talk. Uh, yeah. I really appreciate it.